Before we start diving into some of the details of the properties of carbon, atomic orbitals, and hybridization, we have to find some way to standardize how we're both going to display, name, and talk about these organic compounds. Because we need a universal way to talk about different molecules, such as the difference between ethanol and methanol. And this is why in this video we're going to talk all about the IUPAC nomenclature, or more or less the universal rules when naming organic compounds. But before we start diving into the grammar rules or the principles of IUPAC nomenclature, I first want to talk about a few of the ways or approaches we take to displaying organic compounds. There's different versions showing different aspects of the molecules. For example, we have Lewis structures or condensed structures. Lewis structures is something we're used to showing single bonds, double bonds, and triple bonds while also showing lone pairs. The condensed structures are a little different. They're kind of just writing everything out and grouping together similar groups that are bonded to the same atom. Now, one and two we've probably seen before in Gen Chem. Something that's new to us is probably approach three, the skeletal structure. This structure helps us eliminate the need to constantly be writing carbon and instead helps us represent carbon through the corners or junctions between lines. So on the left we have one, two, three, four points, four corners, four carbons. On the right we have one, two, three carbons and the third carbon is connected to an OH group. Also, when looking at skeletal structures, you might see wedges and dashes. This is to help display the 3D dimensions of a certain molecule. If you see a wedge, then that branch is portraying towards you. If you see dashes, well, that branch is portraying away from you. But as a visual learner myself, my favorite representation is the space filling model. This is more of a 3D model that helps to show us how everything is bonded, bonding angles, how things are associated, and the relative size. We can see in this example we have the space filling model in one corner, the skeletal structure in another, and the condensed model, and comparing how each of them work to showcase the molecule. Now we're ready to dive into the nomenclature rules. One of the things about nomenclature is that it's built on affixes, prefix, infix, and suffix. Changing the prefix, infix, and suffix of words changes the molecule's shape, structure, and functional groups. One of the first prefixes that you're going to learn to help build about IUPAC nomenclature is numbers. Well, what these numbers mean is to help us know how many carbons are in our molecule. For example, our first molecule there is butane. The prefix B-U-T. Bute represents the number four. So that's telling us, hey, we have a hydrocarbon or a molecule with four carbons. Now the end of that molecule, or the name of that molecule, A-N-E. A-N-E is a suffix rule that helps us know that we're dealing right now with a alkane. It's fully saturated, no double bonds or triple bonds. So if we put both the prefix and the suffix together, we know that we have butane, a four carbon structure where each one of those is just single bonds. All organic compounds are solely just linear carbon chains. And this is where we get to talking about the infix rules and branches. But before we can identify the branch, we first gotta identify the longest carbon chain in our molecule. This is what we call the parent chain. So for example here, the longest possible chain we can have is butane, because we have a longest chain of four. But we can see on the second carbon, since we're counting from right to left in this case, since we meet the branch sooner that way, we have a single carbon branch. Now we use meth to represent one carbon and YL to represent that it's a branch, putting it all together to methylbutane, which represents both the parent chain and the branch. We also use prefixes and suffixes to represent things that aren't carbon. Now these are just some of the examples. Down the line when we talk about more about organic chemistry, we're going to explore more nomenclature rules, but for example, in our first molecule here, we have iodomethane. Iodo telling us that we have an iodine in our molecule. Methane telling us we have one carbon. We have some suffix rules, such as the one for alcohols, O-L. 
You can see that suffix rule being used in our example above with 2-butanol. That 2 is telling us that that alcohol molecule is on the second carbon. Now, what direction do we always count in? Like the example that we did with methylbutane, we count in the direction that allows us to meet the functional group soonest. So in all these direct in all these examples, it's right to left. But if the alcohol is on another carbon, we might have to go left to right. Whatever gives us the smallest number to make the name with. There are also nomenclature rules to help us know whether or not we have a cyclic structure. So here we have an example of cyclohexane. That cyclo as a prefix helps us know that we have a cyclic structure versus having hexane in the top left, which is just a linear hydrocarbon chain. Now, there's a lot of extensions to IUPAC nomenclature, things that help us learn more about the properties of a molecule, such as classification and how nomenclature can give us insights to how the certain carbons are hybridized in the molecule. These are things that we're going to explore later on as we find appropriate times to reference nomenclature or classification rules, such as classification rules for carbon and hydrogen. Well, I hope this video was helpful, and in the next video, we're going to be talking a little bit about hybridization, atomic orbitals, and getting into chemical bonding. I hope you have a great day, and see ya!